Welcome back to Photo Mechanic 6 and the final installment of this three-part series. Today, we're gonna to take a look at the IPTC data fields, as well as code replacements, and basically just a few other options that are up here in the menus. So the first thing that we're gonna take a look at is this IPTC field. Now, if you are a journalist, this is pretty much the go-to program. Now, years ago, the main reason that people really switched and started using photo mechanic was two reasons. Adobe Bridge was pathetically slow, and we really needed to be able to caption quickly and efficiently. And this is where this program really excels. Not only does it have awesome IPTC data field that kind of follows the Associated Press, it also has a way to FTP it back to a newspaper or any site that you have. Now you have these little drop down menus here. So anything that you would want to add or save. So if I wanted to save this date or if I wanted to save my name right here, I can save my name. And then when I come back over here, you can see I can just click that and it'll automatically add that over there. So whenever you see these little drop down arrows, they can automatically add information to your fields. Don't forget you can use variables when you're actually back ingesting to add information. If you have like a job name or information, a lot of times I'll use my job name, kind of what I'm calling the slug as my headline. So I'll put a variable in there as job name when I'm ingesting. That way this field automatically gets filled in. So don't forget about variables that are down here. So down here, if you want to save this as a template, you can even obviously save that. And then once again, now make sure if you are gonna load a new template, you clear it and then load it. Otherwise it will just duplicate information and kind of mix stuff up. So you're gonna wanna clear, then load. Another benefit in here with these fields are keywords and stuff. So if you're not a journalist, don't think that these fields, you know, just don't matter. Um, you know. I have my information in here, and this allows people to contact me if they wanted to use a photo, and items such as search engine optimization. They re can read these fields, so if you put your caption in there, when you import your photo into any sort of web program and you need it to read these fields, because you're gonna put metadata in there so that Google and analytics can find your image or know what it's about, they do read some of these very specific fields in here and can automatically fill that stuff out so you don't have to waste your time later on doing it over again. If you don't know what FTP stands for, it's File Transfer Protocol. And it's basically just a way to send images to any client or person. So if they have an FTP site that's open that you can access, you're basically gonna come up here and go to FTP Photos and then you're gonna have this information. So this is my connection. I'm not gonna go in and show you the connection, but you're, it's just basically the password and username and access that you get to it and how you wanna send the photos. There's all kinds of different information. Send as JPEGs, what quality do you wanna send them as? If you do JPEGs, do you wanna be able to send WAV files along with that? Apply metadata if you wanna apply that. So any of this information that you wanna use, if you wanna send that stuff, feel free, you click over here, send, and it's just like that. And what's really cool is you can batch this, so you can just shift click, get a whole bunch of information, it's FTP, and then all these are gone almost instantly. It saves a lot of time having a login to someplace else just to get them to your client. Big fan of FTP. The next thing that we're gonna go into here is code replacement. Now, I will tell you that the main users of code replacements are sports photographers, and there's a specific reason because it makes it really easy to do captions. You don't always have to constantly look up names, and there are sites that automatically make these forms for you. So I'm just gonna drag this little text file over here. Code replacement uses a text file, and there are organizations that, let's say you're gonna play and it is gonna be Clemson against South Carolina. They will basically print out in a text format the rosters, and it will have a little code, and then the number or any information about the person. So I'll have Clemson, and then it will have South Carolina. You load that code replacement in. 
Then when you're captioning your images, you don't have to know who number 24 is. You just need to come in here and put CL24 and then a delineator key. It automatically fills that out for you. The way this works is the first part, you have the code and what it's gonna replace it with. So when this gets typed, this gets put into that area. And you can configure this however you want. You can just have the person's name, you can have it this way, you can have it this way, and you can have multiple ones of these. Right here I have RC1 and then I have RCF1. In this section, if I just want the guy's name, I just do RC1, but if I do RCF1, it's also gonna give what his position is playing that. Now, this is just for sports. You could do this for a big business. I do work for a big business and there's all these people and they have the ridiculous long titles and they're a pain in the neck to have to remember and type in all the time. So I can simply make a code replacement for those people and I can just type that information and it fills out their name and their ridiculously long titles. This is a wonderful, wonderful thing. It does take a little bit to have to fill it out, but you only have to do it once. And I'll usually take this and put it up on a second screen. So if I don't remember what these codes are, um, I can just easily put this up on my second screen for a business. But basically when you're doing sports, it's really easy because usually the FC stands for the school. So I live in Pennsylvania, so Penn State, so PS, and then it would have the guy's number after that. And so that's who it would deal for. Clemson, you would do CL and then their number. So these are really easy to do. And basically, you're just going to pick some code. It doesn't really matter what the code is. So down here, I'll just do another one that's RCF. And then we'll do four. And then you're going to hit tab. This is important. You have to have tab in between that. And then you can type in whatever you want. So whatever you want. So in this case, if I type in RCF4, it's going to type in whatever you want. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it off to my other screen. And I'm going to show you how this works. So we're going to come in here and we've got this up here. Now this uses a delineator key and I'll show you what this means. So we need to be here. Command control C can't actually be in the field for it to come up. So this is the code replacement. So once I've made that text document, I saved it. So here it is as a text document. I've loaded it in here, and this is your deliminator key. So you're gonna type this before and after your code. How this works is we're gonna type that key, we're gonna do FC1, and then that same key again, you're gonna see it's gonna just replace it with whatever I had in there. So once again, we'll do something different. So in this case, we'll do the delineator key, we're gonna do RCF, and we'll do three this time, and then the key again, and then bam, it just goes ahead and replaces that information right into any one of these fields that you access. So that's how you use code replacement inside Photo Mechanic. So we'll take a look at these file menus and I'll kind of explain what some of these do. So we have a lot of information. We have new window. This is just gonna create a new window, a new contact sheet. Open recent is good. So if you wanted to open up a new one of these contact sheets, the last ones that you have are gonna be located here. So here are your things, ingest, ingest from selection, live ingest, live slideshow. So live ingest is basically, um, if you have your camera connected, it's going to live ingest images from your camera. You can rename photos, you can copy and move photos, you can delete photos, you can save photos as. So I have a whole bunch selected right over here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save photos as. And you can see a whole bunch of information comes up and I actually use this a lot. So after I've toned my images, I'll save them as a PSD. And then if my clients want something as a specific size or full size JPEGs, instead of TIFF files or PSDs, I can easily come in here and do it. So I'll apply metadata if I wanna do that or preserve EXIF information when possible. Any of that stuff, you can add your own watermark here. You can crop, you can convert to sRGB for anything that would need to be saved to the web. And then you can save it to your original folder or a multiple variation of different ways. You can send photos via email, FTP as we talked before, we can upload. So if we wanted to upload to a specific place, we just need to say what that upload path is going to be. We can export, we can import GPS coordinates, which I never do. These are for basically printing. 
We can come over here. So this is a lot of your quick keys for kind of tagged and selected objects. So any of that information that you'd want to find, this gives you some of the quick codes. Select by date range, a load of selection, some of your settings to sort of set. So here's where we did that code replacement. If you wanted to come in here and manually do it, set code replacement, reload code replacements, any of that information. We've got our metadata information, which is command I to kind of bring that stuff up, rotate, and it's got some quick keys, mirror photos horizontally, some just interesting ways to organize and set stuff up. If you want a preview, instead of going and just clicking the preview, you could just type command R and that's going to bring up the preview. You can edit photos. This means to edit them in whatever program you've selected. So in my case, it would be Photoshop. If I hit command E or control E, most likely on a PC, it's going to go there. You can create a slideshow or you can send photos as a droplet. So if you wanted to do a slideshow, you can come in here, pick your images, decide how it should look so we can come in here. We can add some text. We can render the text. It's kind of showing you what it's looked like. You can change your delay or how long each image is showed for and any of that information you would hit start and it would play this as a slideshow. You can come in here. If you wanted to convert your all images to digital negative, you could do that. I'm not a big fan of digital negative. So I just leave my raw photos as raw photos. However, I wish there was a universal raw that would make so much more sense, which was Do Adobe's attempt at making this digital negative. Any information that you want to kind of look at, you can just kind of look at. It basically says what it's doing inside of here. So if you wanted to embed a ICC profile into JPEGs, which is always a good thing, you can come in here and pick which profile you want. Or if you wanted to pick a specific one, you could do that. Sometimes that's helpful. Most of this information I'm doing in Photoshop, I don't have really have need or the intent to do it here. We have stuff. If you want to delete your metadata because you didn't want people to know about it for some reason, you could easily do that. Remove your crops. So if you come in here and you wanted to crop, you just wanted to come in and remove them real quick. You can come in here and remove crops. Um, Photo Mechanics website does have some tutorials and information on how to use the program as well. Hopefully this series has been helpful. If you want to see a serious series on something else, I'm having a Photoshop for photographer series come up soon. Any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.